like to show you how you at home can create this textile art felt in this abstract floral design with all these beautiful colours. As before, the process from start to finish is split into two definite halves. The first half, the designing, the laying down of the fibres, and then the second half where we introduce the water, the bamboo mat and all of that. So, so you could actually spend, say, for example, an hour laying down the fibres and an hour felting afterwards. This demonstration will be sped up a little bit quicker for the playback, so please follow along and use the pause function uh, uh, where you need to. For the first half, you're going to need your plastic template that was provided in my kit, the 45 by 30 centimetres. You'll only need one of these sheets of plastic to lay down uh, on your work surface to begin. We're going to use this as the template, the starter size, and as you can see, this one has shrunk about 20% in the process. You're also going to need a pair of scissors, so have them to hand ready. You're going to also need the wools and fibres and yarns that were provided in my kit. So pull those all out and have them to one side ready. If you are using your own bits and pieces from at home, then just pull out an assortment. You can substitute colours wherever you like and be creative. There's several techniques that I've used in creating this piece of art and I'm going to talk through them and demonstrate them one by one so please follow along and as I say pause wherever you need to. So the first step that I'm going to show you involves using your white merino wool so if you want to pull that out we're going to be laying down a base. Think of it like you're creating a canvas or a piece of paper onto which we're going to draw with all the other coloured wools. It's a common technique used by felt makers. For information, you don't have to do it this way. As you get more confident, more experienced with felt making, you may decide to just lay down fibres with the colours straight off the bat without having a white background to start from. But as a beginner, it's much easier to have this white base laid down. It will make sure you don't end up with any holes. As before, we're going to do two layers. If you can pull your white wool into two sections, one is going to be the layer left to right and the other layer is going to be the opposite direction. Off you go. And you can see I'm just loosely, roughly filling in the lines without going on the outside of my plastic template. The next stage I'd like to show you, or the next technique, is called shading. And for this you will need the colours of blue that are provided in my kit. We're going to loosely shade in a sky area as a backdrop for the flowers to sit on. To do this, pull fibres away in the, same, in the same way that you did for the white fibres. But here I'm painting or drawing, I'm using the fibre like I would pastels or, or a paintbrush. I'm not necessarily overlapping, I'm not filling in the space. The white base is doing that job for me, so now I'm just providing surface decoration. I like to draw at an angle. There's no reason for this, it's nothing to do with construction, it's simply because I, 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 I like how it appears like it's a drawn technique and it, as, I, as I add other blues to this picture you'll see they begin to layer up and, and it looks like a sky. I'm just taking another shade now and doing exactly the same and just enjoying working with the fibres and working with the colours. I'm not pulling these blues all the way down to the bottom because this is where the, the floral and the leaves and the grass and the foliage is going to be. I'm really focusing my blues towards the top of this piece. And there's no real rules as to whether you put darker shades or lighter shades down. Um, at the beginning or towards the end, it's really up to you and how creative you want to be. Taking my third colour now, which is a slightly darker shade of blue. And you don't have to go in that direction, you can go in a different direction. And just to soften some of those edges, I'm just going to blend in over that darker shade, some of the lighter in both of the lighter colours. And you can see how feathery and how light this wool is, the wool fibres are, as I'm pulling away. You're just gradually building up layers as you go and pat it down just so that nothing flies away. And that would be called shading. Now I'm going to show you how to create a pre-felt. Ideally, you can just push your work that you've been doing so far to one side. 
To create a pre-felt, we're going to use this piece of plastic. We're going to lay down some fibres on here. We're just going to wet down and just do the very beginning, early stages of felting. And what it'll do is, it almost creates a paper. It's like creating a paper that we're going to be able to cut shapes out of. And those shapes, a bit like fuzzy felt when you were growing up perhaps, you'll be able to lay those shapes like collage onto, onto, a, uh, onto your design. I'm using these three hot pinky or orangey colours and this green. I'm going to create some floral pre-felt colours and some leafy pre-felt colours but it's up to you. You can do this in any colours that you've got available. It's almost like creating a small piece of mini felt to cut out of. I'm just laying down from this green my fibres down in a row. We're going to just do two layers. So if you've got one of my kits, split the greeny colour or whatever colour it is you're doing the pre-felt, split it in half and you, you should have enough to just go down one way and then the other half should be enough to just run a row this way, a few rows this way. Pat down. And for these leaves, I'm adding some decoration on the surface and I'm going to show you how to use mulberry silk and tusser silk. And these fibres are lovely to work with. You can feel how silky and luxurious they are in your fingers. They're going to add interest, detail and shine to the surface of any of your felt making. I'm going to first take the darker colour and if you laid this down as it is now on top of the, on top of the wool, it wouldn't felt very well. What you'd find is as you're rubbing it with your fingers, it sort of bunches up a bit like dog hair or a dreadlock. It wants to mat together and it will just come away from the surface. You want it to stick and because if you remember the mohair that was quite hairy, it's not hairy, it's shiny and it's smooth and it's glossy so it doesn't stick down so easily. To, to help it stick down, I am just teasing it, almost like back combing it. Back combing, teasing, holding quite tight with two fingers here and teasing pulling away, making it as hairy as I possibly can, almost like you're creating fluff or clouds. The thinner it is, the airier it is, the better it will be at sticking to the surface. And I'd like to have two colours. Take your time with this, there's no rush. And it will really want to stick to your fingers, so you'll have to just fight with it to get it off your fingers. And you can see you don't need very much of this at all. And you wouldn't want a lot of it on the surface anyway. I'm just going to position this here. And it might look a bit random and a bit messy at the moment. But when it felt, you'll see how lovely it, it, it looks like the veins on a leaf or the branches on a tree. It's a very organic look and texture. Next I'm going to take some of this hot pink that I've got. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to make myself a pre-felt and I'm going to do it in this section here. So I'm just laying down, say, a three inch square. So just one layer and then another layer this way and because I've got a bit of pink left I'm going to make these a little bit thicker I'm just using some of the pink up as a third layer to go diagonal but you don't have to do that it will work with two layers. Underneath I'm going to use this more bright sort of grapefruit coloured pink as part of my flowers and I'm going to do exactly the same thing don't worry if they overlap each of the colours it's quite nice where they do overlap. Finally this hot orange I'm going to make another final square. If you remember to wet these fibres down and get them to a stage where we can begin to felt with them. Now you're adding soap. Now you're adding plastic over the top and you can just fold over the other half. Consult your written steps. You've forgotten what to do next, but I'm here to remind you it's water over the surface and we want to get rid of all this air that's, that's amongst the fibres. We want to get rid of the air and we want to push all the water in the soap. Give it a little wipe over and flip it over. Same on the reverse. Add some water, add some soap. When it appears that the fibres are now flat and that all the air has been expelled, now's the time to remove the plastic. You can just remove, unfold the top section for now and as before, soap on your hands and pat down on the surface. Keeping your hands as flat as you can as you work. We now need to do the same on the other side and to allow us to flip it I'm just going to replace the plastic over the surface and turn. And you should be able to see from this side the silk has started to become one with the wool behind. Just take it easy on this area here where there's silk. 
it starts to get too soapy, just give it a little blot. After you've been rubbing like this for four or five minutes on one side and four or five minutes on the other side, now is the time to blot it all over. Take a corner or an edge and pick it up and lift it up from the plastic underneath and it will feel like a very soft, delicate silk scarf. If the fibres are still sticking to the plastic, then you've not felted enough, so I would add a little more water, a little more soap, continue felting for a few more minutes